A thousand and one. A space odyssey. No, it's, it's, it's just a thousand and one. And it's on Peacock. It has audio description. And let's talk about this film. Man, this film was recommended to me way back, I guess, when it was in some some kind of release. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what its theater count was. I don't remember. Um, but I had a friend who lives out in L.A. who messaged me and was like, oh my God, have you seen A Thousand and One yet? It is my favorite film. And I was like, no. But I'm going to put a pin in that. And that's good enough for me. So when I do see this available for me to watch, I'm going to do it. And then it dropped on Peacock. Totally unexpected. I wasn't even... I was like, what? Okay, let's do it. I was not ready for this film. Um, I actually didn't even know anything about it. I, I like, aggressively sometimes try not to know things about films. Um, but, uh, so to talk a little bit about the film... I guess I'll tell you it's about uh, a kid, Terry, who is in foster care, and he's really little, and uh, I think he likes Power Rangers. <laughs> I think that's one of the things we learn about him uh, when he's really young, is that he says something about how he likes Power Rangers. And um, we meet Inez, who has come to liberate him from, uh, she's come to get her child out of foster care. And, uh, later on we end up meeting Lucky, who she says is his dad, and, and, uh, Lucky is, has just gotten out of prison, and it just kind of reminds you of this, um, sort of life where kids go into foster care and their parents, because their parents are in the system and then they get out and then their parents want to see them again but she's taken him out without actually having legal custody of him um she just kind of retrieves him <laughs> from foster care and that's kind of what the film is about and I don't want to say too much more about it because this film took me on a journey at first I thought I knew what the film was. And I was like, okay, so this is going to be like The Pursuit of Happiness Meets Precious. Got it. We're, <laughs> I'm on board. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess there are like, there are elements of that, but it's not, it's not entirely that. And by, easily by the third act of the film, this kind of moonlights its way into uh, just having been something completely different uh using the moonlight reference as being like if you start off watching moonlight the film you think you're watching is not the film that you watch by the third act of the film uh you know it's it's act one to act three if you if you skip to the middle act you'd be like what did i miss what's happening where did we go um it's very much a journey. It's very much a ride uh, that it takes you on. And it doesn't feel like it's going to take you on that ride, by the way. I would. I think that's that's a very valid uh, response to this film. It has like a 7 on IMDb, but it has like an 81 Metacritic score, which is that's pretty decent. I mean, it's Metacritic is a little bit more of a pain in the ass to get a high score on than Rotten Tomatoes. So, um, yeah, it's it's got a high enough Metacritic where I would say pay attention to it. Um, I think the IMDb crew, they just start giving, they don't have the patience for this film. It's, it's under two hours. Uh, at the beginning, I didn't really know what was special about the film either. I didn't really know where the film was going. It requires your patience. It requires you to be willing to hear the whole story. And if you don't want to hear the whole story... If you zone out, if you tap out, if you walk away, then the film's going to leave you with sort of um, an incomplete false experience. This is a film where if you're going to see it, see it to the end. Because that's the journey. And if you go on the journey, 
it's totally fucking worth it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it's, uh, the, the third act definitely has some twists and turns, and it's, it's the kind of twists and turns that you, that you, you're expecting, but not expecting. Um, you're like, oh yeah, I, I saw that coming, you're like, whoa, wait, did I see that coming? I didn't see that coming, I saw this coming. Yeah, it's, uh, it definitely goes places where, uh, I... I kind of thought would I thought it would cover some things, but I didn't think it was going to cover all of the things that it covers in the third act. So um, it was definitely uh, definitely ended up being worth the experience. But yeah, if I'm being honest, when it when the film started off, I was kind of like, I don't get it. <laughs> I I didn't. I didn't really see what was special about this film because I saw so much of it as being uh, the little parts of it coming out of other films that have already sort of done similar things before. And um, I was just kind of looking for it to make its own voice and its own path, and it does it by the end of the film. And Tiana Taylor is fantastic in this. I know she's a hip-hop artist, and I know she just happened to be, at the same time, I just reviewed yesterday, I just reviewed White Men Can't Jump, which she's in, and it's terrible. And I didn't even bother mentioning her, because she's so forgettable in it. And it's, it's so, it's, it's like, in this, it's like the complete opposite. In White Men Can't Jump, she's willing to just, like, sit in the background and be like... I'm here. What's up? <laughs> but in this, she's like, she's a force. You know, she's a force to be reckoned with. And, um, there's definitely, like, a correlation between her performance and the kind of performance that Monique gave in Precious, even though they're not at the same level of, uh, <laughs> volatility. <laughs> I'll go with that. <laughs> Um, I mean, Monique's was so surprising because it was Monique. It's the thing that, like, we don't always say, but it's, we really need to say it. It wasn't just that the performance itself was good, it was who it was coming from. You know, a lot of times, that's what's surprising to people about these films, is it's not necessarily that that performance is the most amazing performance of the year. It's also the fact <laughs> that it's coming from a certain person. I think a lot of people were blown away by Brendan Fraser in The Whale because they believed Brendan Fraser was incapable of such performance. I did not believe that, which is why The Whale did not... He didn't get my best actor note last year because I already knew he could act because I'd already seen some of the films he'd made in the 90s. So I knew Brendan Fraser just had... Hollywood just didn't like to challenge him. Sort of like with Ben Affleck. Like, people don't think Ben Affleck can act. Well, if you've seen some of his stuff, I don't know, like Hollywood Land, he kind of gave you a hint a little bit earlier on in his career that, yeah, put him in the right role and he's pretty damn good at it. So, here Tiana Taylor really does break through, though, and she really does stand out and say, listen, I know you think I'm a hip-hop artist, but, uh, I've really got, I've really got something, something going on here. If, if you give me the right role. You can't put me in White Man Can't Jump, though. You gotta put me in, <laughs> you gotta put me in films like a thousand and one. <laughs> um, yeah, she just has to be well utilized. So, um, I enjoyed that about... Uh, the film, I enjoyed the fact that I've, like, discovered Tiana Taylor and the ability that she has, because if I hadn't seen this film, I would be like, the girl from Wyman Can't Jump? I don't know. I guess she's all right. Uh, would not be excited about anything with her in it, but now I am. Um, it's a good film. It's, 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 uh, it, I think it came out of Sundance. I've seen this pop up on some Oscar lists. It's not going to get nominated. I'm sorry. Um, first of all, I don't trust Hollywood to nominate a film with a 
almost entirely black ass. Uh, I just don't. <laughs> Especially on top of that, it's it's a film where Tiana Taylor is the most well known cast member, uh, and it's a film that released in the spring. It didn't and it didn't make like a hundred million at the box office. I there, I mean, there's so many reasons why I don't trust the Academy to remember this. I think it's possible that this film and Tiana may end up making some like critics lists. Uh, maybe even an independent spirit nomination. Who knows? But no, it's it's not going to get anywhere near. Even like a Gotham Award. I don't know. But it's not going to touch the Oscars. It's not even going to get close. So uh, we can stop talking about that, unfortunately. Because uh, I'd love to be able to talk about Tiana Taylor for Best Supporting Actress. but um, Or Best Actress. I don't know. I don't know where the film lands. Uh, she's... it's. It's an odd duck for me, because it's obvious that Terry is the lead character. Unfortunately, Terry also changes three times. So, um, it's, uh, I mean, he has to age up throughout the course of the film. So he's played by three different actors. Uh, and that is also sort of where I felt the audio description lacked, was the transition for me. Uh, I didn't I missed, I feel like I missed the transitions. I felt like all of a sudden, Terry just was suddenly a different person. <laughs> and it took me a second, and I was like, wait a minute, what happened? I was like, oh, Terry aged up. Okay. Terry's older now. Got it. Um, I would say especially the transition to the middle age, where he goes from being little to being like, 13, 12, 11, somewhere around in there. Uh, and then there's like an older teenage version of him that's a, that's like weeks away from being 18. Um, so there's like a little kid version who's like six. There's one, there's like a middle version of him. And then there's like the older version of him. And the transition from little to middle was vague. And I didn't even... It's hard for me to even pick up on the fact that it had happened. I was like, then I, some somehow like while I was in it, I was like, oh, it happened, and then it, then we transitioned again, and suddenly it was played by another actor, and I felt like the audio description didn't do a, a good enough job of pointing that out. That you know, we time jump, time jump, check it out, we time jumped. <laughs> it's a new actor. <laughs> And so it was just kind of confusing. It took me a minute to sort of be like, okay, well, oh, well, she's calling him Terry, so we must have time jumped? Because that's not the same voice. And I, I would have preferred maybe like a heads up of some kind in the audio description, because visually I'm sure I would have been able to note that Terry just grew exponentially <laughs> from the last scene to this scene. And so that oh, Terry's larger now. Cool. Um, you know, I mean, you can see when things age and people get older and they do things with makeup and maybe they put like a little gray in somebody's hair. You know, uh, it's, it's easy to see time jumps. It's harder when like the scene just goes from one scene to another and it's just people talking and then suddenly somebody's voice is deeper than it was. Uh, you know, I mean... Throw me the bone. <laughs> Throw me a bone. <laughs> um, another thing, uh, I thought the film did pretty well with a lot of symbolism. Um, there are several moments that are sort of poignant within the films that I thought the, it actually did really well with. A lot of them have to do with Terry and Lucky, uh, or the character of Lucky. They're just these little moments that he has. Um... One of them is when he, uh, Lucky gives him his first, uh, bling. <laughs> he, uh, bestows him with, with some bling, uh, which sort of felt like Lucky was officially accepting this kid as his kid, you know, this, this, this is mine. Here's his bling to, to prove it. Um, and there's another scene later on that, 
feels kind of poignant where, uh, it, at least in the audio description, it reminds us that Lucky's motorcycle is there and it's got the helmet on it and, uh, and it's just sort of like a nice touch, um, for, for that little moment in time. Um, otherwise the attention to detail is pretty solid. I mean, there are little things where, uh, Inez is constantly trying, <laughs> she's constantly picking up her pack of cigarettes. <laughs> That's in the description, like, multiple times. Uh, so, if you're somebody who, I, I don't know, doesn't want to hear about smoking, well, you, you're going to hear about it, because she's she's into it. <laughs> she's all about it. Um, and uh, there's a lot of references to music in this, and I don't know if the albums really matter, but I feel like music matters to the film. I feel like music matters to Lucky, and his carefully curated uh, album list matters. And it always sort of... Um, it was a little weird to me that we didn't make more of a focus on music in the film. But coming in from an independent lens, perhaps they just didn't get the rights to the music that they really wanted to get the rights to. So it's hard to sit there and be like... And have like a conversation on music. You know? Uh, so I don't know if it was the album covers were really obvious or not, but it was one of those things that I questioned, like, am I missing something or did they not necessarily have, uh, the rights to any of this stuff or are they all bootlegged? You know, th does he not really collect real CDs? He just rips them. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, food for thought, but, uh, definitely, I would recommend a thousand and one. I would recommend watching it, and even if you get like a feeling that a thousand and one, when you're watching it at the beginning, you're like, I don't know about this movie. I don't know if this is my thing. Give it some time. Let you have to let this film sit in because I promise you, the payoff is at the end. <laughs> the payoff is once you have have had the experience of the film. Um then it becomes worth it. That's also why it's not going to be one of my favorite films of the year, is because ultimately the film should be rewarding, like, the whole time. I shouldn't have to wait till the end of the film to feel validated. So I did kind of feel like, during the first half of the film, I was like, I don't know, what, I don't know why this is so damn special. I was thinking about my friend who was like, this is my favorite film, and I was like, I don't know, man. Uh, I just, I got nothing, I got nothing right now. Um, but by the end of the film, I was like, oh, okay, all right. So it does have its own voice and its own story to tell. I got you. Um, and, uh, that kind of makes it special and it made it worthwhile and I was happy that I saw it. So, um, all things considered, I'm going to give a thousand and one a B plus. It gets there. It does. Um, I, you know, uh, I kind of felt the same way about Moonlight. Uh, I don't think each act worked the same way, but everybody went ape shit over Moonlight. So, uh, they, just, they just went crazy. <laughs> like, everybody was like, oh my god, Moonlight changed my life. And I was like, I don't think each one of those acts are the same. Like, they didn't impact me in the same way that... Uh, you know, so it's, it's kind of hard because I didn't feel like the film was consistent that way. I didn't feel like the same, I didn't feel like I was constantly just emotionally racked, uh, by Moonlight. So here it kind of is like first act kind of sets things up. It's a little slow. Second act, things are getting, things are happening, things are changing, uh, you're starting to see what the film wants to be. Third act, bam. Third act, smacks you in the face. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I don't know. Enjoy it. It's on Peacock. And thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Please click that subscribe button. And, uh, we can continue to talk about films with audio description. Because somebody has to. <laughs> And you can also go to my website, magnumovieguy.com, 
you can go to the audio description project adp.acb.org it'll let you know what has audio description and where you can watch it you can follow me on twitter or instagram at mac the movie guy you can go to the adna.org that's the adna.org and it'll let you know who's narrating your favorite films and television series and uh that's it for me i will review something else for you guys and see you on the other side